It's now time for our weekly discussion. Every Friday we have our African Week Review. And my guest, Mr. Onchari Oyeyo, is already with me in Studio Karibu Sana. He is an international relations expert. Once again, welcome. So we have two issues today. You know, the BBI uh, report and Ethiopia, the referendum vote. So let's start here in Kenya and let's discuss the BBI report because we expect it on Tuesday, that is November the 26th, that's when we expect uh, the president and uh, Raila Odinga to receive it jointly. We could speculate a bit on the contents, so I want you to take us through that. Well, uh, I think uh, they've come out and, you know, leaked some information. They've talked about, oh, you know, we're going to have a stretched or increased or expanded executive. Mm -hmm. That is a president, deputy president, prime, prime minister, minister, two deputies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that is the main thing. Mm -hmm. But you remember at some point, there were guys from the president's side, like they speak of the National Assembly, who came out and said mm -hmm. the BBI was not mandated to actually lead us to a referendum. It was not part of uh, the mandates. Mm -hmm. So you could expect um, these recommendations, but not to take us to a referendum. Mm -hmm. Like they can be, you know, adjusted in parliament. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be the main thing. And then, of course, maybe they can reduce the number of uh, constituencies. What we have is so big mm -hmm. because we've been crying of the wage bill and stuff like that, mm -hmm. which of course has added to the burden we have in terms of economics. Mm -hmm. So that could be the, the main thing could be the expanded ex executive, which of course will accommodate more people mm -hmm. from more communities mm -hmm. so as to reduce mm -hmm. the tensions we've always experienced uh, after every you know election, mm -hmm. and then of course uh, the reduced. Uh, constituencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've mentioned the referendum, and of course, we'll be delving deeper into that. Yes. But let me just ask on now, because Kenyans have their expectations, yes. and you know, in this uh, statement that we received today, they said, if I could just read it out, they said the face of Kenya was captured with at least seven thousand citizens from all ethnic groups, genders, cultural, and religious practices. Basically, saying that they did speak to various people. But then, uh, do you think those expectations? Because over time, we've had them. I mean. Even here at, K at KTN News, we've been having that series on the BBI Watch. Yeah. Do you think these expect expectations will be met? Uh, of course, we're talking about a population of uh, close to 50 million people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have different understandings of democracy from mm -hmm. person to person. So meeting the expectations of uh, all Kenyans is not possible. Yes. What you'd expect is to capture the imagination of uh, a majority of Kenyans. And Kenyans are, v are a very patient lot. They've taken very, very messy, you know, situations from their leaders. Mm -hmm. So if they come up with something that is likely to make a good percentage of Kenyans comfortable, then I think it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, 7,000 is a very small number. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. yeah. out of 50 million. Yeah. The, you know, they're talking like they were doing an opinion poll. That's mm -hmm. when you can talk about 2,000, 3,000, even 1,000 people. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about collecting views meant to lead to what we call uh, adjustment of leadership. You need to collect views from a greater number of people. Mm -hmm. So 7,000 is not enough. But mm -hmm. my expectation is, just like most Kenyans, they'll come up with the proposals or recommendations that can help us make the next step in the road to, you know, mm -hmm. perfect democracy, which, of course, again, is a dream. It mm -hmm. cannot be perfect, but it's near perfect mm -hmm. if we can get there. Let's remain there on that number, 7,000, because, I mean, you can't, co you can't even start comparing 7,000, you know, to 50 million. Yeah. But this happens a lot, even on the opinion polls. Yes. And uh, I don't know, have you, has someone ever interviewed you? Has someone ever asked you any of these I actually questions? do opinion polls myself under the Center for African Progress, mm -hmm. and we don't talk about, you don't, you know, because of the resources we have, you cannot reach a very huge number of people. Mm -hmm. But from experience, mm -hmm. the more people you talk to, the greater the reliability of what you come up with. Mm -hmm. You remember in 2017, we actually did an opinion poll which uh, took us to 10,000 people, and we predicted a 53, 43% mm -hmm. for Uru and Raila, respectively. Mm -hmm. So the more people you talk to, the bigger, you know, the chances of getting a credible outcome. Mm -hmm. So, but we, when we're talking about um, 7,000, when you're talking about now a referendum or constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. That's a small number. Mm -hmm. They should have taken more time, gotten more resources, and talked to more Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So still, it's a small number. And most likely, they actually kept on... Uh, this is a political process. And uh, if you think about it, it's like they have some predetermined positions. Mm -hmm. Kenyans most likely didn't tell them, we want a prime minister. We want two deputies. No. They had a predetermined yeah. position. Yeah. And they included it. Could you like us to see you have this? You know, Kenyan said, okay, let's do that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. there is a predetermined position, and then now you look for a way to endorse that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
a referendum, do you see us having one or are we even ready for one before 2022 or even after 2020? On so many fronts, the answer is no. Any mm -hmm. Kenyan who's, you know, in possession of a functional brain will tell you the country is not ready for a referendum. A few days ago, we had a census, which was a total mess. Uh, for example, in Yamira County, uh, in 2009, there was a population of around 598,000 people. In 2019, we were told it's now six, what, six or five. Mm -hmm. So a difference of 7,000. So in a decade, 10 years, Nyamira has increased by only 7,000. Mm -hmm. And you tell us people were counted. So we did a census. There was Uduma number, which I don't understand, actually. If you talk to any Kenyan on the streets, they'll tell you they don't understand why it was conducted. Mm -hmm. Bogus. Mm -hmm. That was money spent, close mm -hmm. to 10 billion. Mm -hmm. And then we go to a referendum. It's nonsensical. Economically, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So if they have a referendum in the BBI, then it has to go all the way to 2022. The question has to be part of the electoral process of 2022. Mm -hmm. Kenyans, with the kind of suffering that is all over, are not ready for a referendum. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mm -hmm. It's political nonsense and economic stupidity, mm -hmm. period. Political nonsense, economic stupidity. Yes, Kenyans are suffering, and it's not a secret. Every single day you guys come up with very nice headlines highlighting what Kenyans are going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are so tired. Members of parliament are stealing. The president seems to be out of control. He cannot actually control what's going on. Mm -hmm. Scandal after scandal. So we cannot, I don't think we have the money to finance a referendum. A referendum. But they can take all those recommendations to parliamentary debates and agree, mm -hmm. which again, it's a collection of members of parliament we cannot bank on. Mm -hmm. They get bought using very small amounts of money, 10,000. Someone changes position. So is it going to represent or capture the imaginations and desires of Kenyans? The answer is no. And of course, the infamous statement, Manataka Nifanya Nini. That is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this has come, you know, as a result of the 2018 handshake, you know, between Raila Odinga and the president of Kenyatta. So does this, once it's out, and of course, once we see the contents, is it... Does it mean, uh, or rather, does it spell a new dawn in terms of how we'll carry out our politics, in terms of, um, for instance, the violence that, that was witnessed in 2007? Is it a new dawn in how we handle our you know, political issues? Well, there has been some kind of movement from uh, what you used to experience when the president and the former prime minister were not working together. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, if you look at what happened, happened in uh, the Kibra by election, mm -hmm. um, there was no violence mm -hmm. as it used to be, you know. There was, what I can say, a peaceful campaign. Of course, there were uh, pockets of violence here and there. Mm -hmm. But as the president said, there's some kind of movement towards uh, tranquility. Mm -hmm. And um, it, uh, I think, um, let me say, an entry into a new political train mm -hmm. where there's some kind of tolerance, mm -hmm. there's some kind of accommodation. And uh, I don't think there's going back because Kenyans every single day get to move, you know, in the right direction when it comes to understanding of politics. Mm -hmm. It's not about bitterness mm -hmm. and violence. It's mm -hmm. about competition of ideas. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a good move. Mm -hmm. And I think because they committed, that is the president and the former prime minister, I don't think there's going back. Mm -hmm. It's a commitment they made. Kenyans have, you know, supported them. Mm -hmm. So whatever the outcome, I think we're going in, it's, it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for a referendum, I don't think economically the country's ready mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. and you just reminded me of that photo that you know uh, uh, took rounds on social media after the kibra by election of uh, Simbarati and uh, baraza in parliament shaking hands yes yet you know their supporters were of different opinions then yeah. you know, after the Ditmas's hat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's now switch gears to Ethiopia um, uh, because they did hold that referendum vote where Saddam is seeking autonomy and the results were actually expected to be out yesterday. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday yes. yes. Because the vote was on Wednesday. It is now Friday. Yes. As far as I'm concerned, the results are not yet out. Is there They're a reason not. perhaps as to why? They're not out and uh, I think obviously that is a question of uh, counting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Prime Minister is a very bright fellow. He's been recognized worldwide, of course, for his uh, brilliance and commitment to democracy. Mm -hmm. So I'm tempted to believe they want to take their time and do the thing in the right way. And of course, we can speculate what will happen. Mm -hmm. Most likely, the Sidama people will go ahead and say they want a state of their own, which will now you know, increase the number of states to, to 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, the whole process has its ups, ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But in my thinking, I think it was OK, so mm -hmm. as to avoid 
further, you know, uh, pressure and violence. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's still stick there. And what happens if it passes and what happens if it doesn't? You know, if they're not granted or, or if autonomy is not declared? Now, based on the outcome, most likely, you know, the Sedema people have come out and most likely all they want is a state. Mm -hmm. If it's granted, uh, it marks, uh, of course, some kind of uh, peace in the Sedema region that has been a bit violent. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't happen, and it's a genuine process, you know, they've come out and said, no, we don't want to have an independent state, I mean, uh, uh, an autonomous state. Mm -hmm. And they get to verify that it was genuine, you know, then still it will be okay. Mm -hmm. But then if it happens, for the Zedema people, it can be okay. But then it can be some kind of precedence which will, you know, set in motion other smaller tribes to push forward mm -hmm. autonomy as yeah, well. Yeah. So it would be very tough for the Prime Minister to control that kind of mm -hmm. momentum towards the pressure for autonomy for, from other mm -hmm. states. Mm -hmm. So from nine we are ten, so we might want we might see other states, you know, yeah, and ethnic right. groups coming out and saying, hey, we'd like to be autonomous as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. not actually autonomous, but semi-autonomous. Mm -hmm. yes. And you're right, because actually that's was supposed to be my next question, because what are the other implications of now having a new state, apart from what you mentioned, of course? Um, now, apart from the negative, negative side, of course, mm -hmm. uh, there's the positive side of it, where you talk about uh, economic independence. You get to prioritize what you'll get as a state. If mm -hmm. maybe the, your problem is uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. you'll be able to say, we'd like to construct what? Maybe a railway line or a bunch of roads and all that. Mm -hmm. So you don't get to be burdened by the economic plan of the national government. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you can be able to now uh, bring up your cultures of people. Because, you know, those states are curved along ethnic lines. Mm -hmm. So you can prime your culture mm -hmm. with the Sidama people. And these are what? Uh, identity. Mm -hmm. So you don't get to be lost in translation mm -hmm. in the bigger group mm -hmm. yeah uh, maybe lastly because i'm told we need to wind up but uh, what are those that are backing the sedama region want because you've said you know um, uh, about the needs for the states if they come up but specifically on the sedama people what what is it that they want number one they want economic uh, uh, independence that is uh, you know the ability to determine their destiny as a people in terms of the economy if they get a share mm -hmm. from the national government they know how to spend it they'd want to have uh, they've pressed so much on political recognition because when they send people to the national government, they act as brokers. So in the process, what they deserve is not gotten down there. So once they come up with a, a, a semi-autonomous mm -hmm. reason, they can pick their leaders and hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. That is actually the main concern. They want to have, just like the other nine states, a way of controlling their leadership. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, in, okay, I'm told we need to wrap up. We are Sorry, out of time, but thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ontario thank Yeo, you so much. an international relations expert. And of course, that was our weekly discussion, African Week Review, where today we were addressing two matters. The BBI report, which, as we all know by now, is expected to be delivered to uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, Raila Odinga on Tuesday. They should receive it jointly. That is November the 26th. And that referendum vote in Ethiopia, which is not yet out, the results are not yet out as at now, and of course, uh, Mr. Oncherry here has explained to us perhaps why it is not yet out. So that, that's where we end it here on uh, Bottom Line Africa today. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Grace Korea. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing, even as we leave you with the proverb of the day.